I'm excited to be here today. This is my first presentation in this group. So uh, yeah, looking forward to showing you what I've been doing. I've been basically using Microsoft lists, uh, SharePoint lists for everything over the last couple of years and uh, sort of getting more and more custom as I go. So excited to to share some of these features that I've got here in this uh, in this initial slide, um, sort of how I, how I built these. So uh, just to give you a little bit of background uh, as to why I'm doing this, I work for a government organization called the Natural Sciences and Re Engineering Research Council. And uh, so basically we, we give out grant money for science and engineering research projects. And so as part of our peer review, one of the things we do is we, once we you know, assess an application, uh, the researchers, uh, their peers give them scores, and then we want to give them feedback on their applications. And so what we have here, what I have here is the custom card that I created uh, in the SharePoint list. Uh, so you can see here, this is just a sort of sample uh, data here, but you can see that on the different criteria we rate them on, they, they get a certain different score uh, depending on how good their application is. And next to it, uh, you can see that I've got a, a comment field so that uh, the peer reviewers can leave their feedback under specific criteria uh, for each application. And so this is what the card looks like. And then we'll talk sort of about a few of the, the neat things about this card that I have been, uh, been working on and, and working towards over the years. I did want to mention we've been using this uh, for a few years now. And um, there's a few different functionalities that need to be tweaked and modified. So you might notice, you know, this isn't necessarily the most efficient way to do things. Um, yeah, basically, when when new lists came around, there's a few different um, things that sort of behaviors, I guess, that changed that uh, have made sort of workarounds necessary. But um, yeah, we'll talk about sort of the creative ways that, that those take place. But basically, uh, just quickly here. So um, one of the things that we had to work around was that uh, when you're using inline edit field in SharePoint, um, one of the nice, one of the things that we need uh, with our with the solution we have here is that uh, due to you know privacy considerations, um, people are only able to see the the assessments and the applications that they're actually reviewing. So not everybody's reviewing every application, and so by default. Um, our, our committee members are only able to see the list of applications. They can see the list itself, but not all the items uh, in edit. And uh, to make inline edit view, uh, it now requires edit permissions for the entire list to be able to use inline edit. So we had to, to run some tweaks, which I'll mention uh, later. Uh, there's also, uh, I guess this is probably potentially a bug, but when you add multiple people to a multi-person field, the order that they were added in uh, gets tweaked and seems to be almost alphabetical, but not quite every time. Um, so I basically had to switch from a multi-person field to doing things one person at a time, uh, which we'll talk about when I get to the list. And then uh, another interesting consideration is that filters on lists used to be reapplied. Like you, you could basically set a yes no column in a SharePoint list, uh, and when and if you if you were filtering based on that, if you you know change the checkbox value that item would disappear from the list when you when you when it, once it was filtered out but now the item stays until you refresh the page and then it will disappear so um, i do have uh, items in the feedback portal in case uh, you want to uh, <laughs> you want to see those if you, if you experience uh, experience them yourself i tend to work around the edge cases the edges of uh, of different tools and so um you know probably not i haven't gotten a lot of momentum on those but it would be very handy to have those things back but we'll talk about how i worked around them um, so the first thing I want to talk about here is uh, the ability to to one of the things that we wanted to be able to do here is to give our committee members the ability to easily add feedback that they might want to give to to applicants. Uh, and that includes some example statements. So there, these are statements they might want to give, uh, you know, over and over again, they might want to use the same things. We don't want to have to have them need to copy and paste information or, you know, look up something to be able to word things properly. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how to add canned statements to text fields. So I'm going to bring the list that I've got over here. Um, so yeah, th uh, the first thing that I'll mention here, just as we go into this list in the in the view here, is that <clears throat> when I built this custom card, um, one nice thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to show a lot of information on the card, but I didn't want every card to show all the information all the time. And so uh, it's, this is actually the second thing that I worked on, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but I've implemented a, a sort of, uh, you know, show comments, uh, sort of an expanded and collapsed view for this card. So when I click, uh, I can either click sort of in the body of the, the list item itself or on this comments box, and the card will actually expand to show the entire 
uh, basically all the different criteria that we talked about. Um, yeah, I'll talk about the little the code of how that works uh, in a few minutes, but um, for the time being, I wanted to uh, sort of again talk about how to get um, a set of pre-written comments into text fields, you know, repeatedly and, and to be able to provide people with a list of, of ways to do that. So for each different criteria here, I have a list of um, of pre-written comments that uh, that you know committee members might want to add to their uh, to their comments box. And so this is just a, a custom hover card, and I'll talk about the code in a little bit. But basically, what you can do here is the members can scroll through. You know, I, I want to add this comment. They can just click the comment. It'll it'll actually highlight to show that they've already added it, and then it will it will append the comment text to the end of the comment box here, and you'll see that it updates uh, inside here. So I can continue to do that. I can add as many comments here as I want. You'll see they'll all turn green, and the the box will slowly fill itself out. Uh, I can do the same thing. So I've got a different set of statements here. Uh, this is for the for the second criteria. You notice here I've got also got some formatting. I'm not necessarily going to talk about it, but I, uh, I'd be so, certainly happy to give some sample code here. Um, but right now, because this uh, this particular indicator is is relatively low, strong is considered a relatively low indicator of 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 the merit of the proposal. Um, they actually members are actually required to give comments here. That's why there's this red uh, box here it says that uh, fields requires comments. And so I've highlighted in, in uh, yellow with formatting when it, because it's empty and it has this score. Um, so if I do add comments to this box, uh, I can go again and select the items here and you'll see that the red box now disappears, um, as does the, the goldenrod formatting because I've added some comments there like, a, like I'm required to by our policy. Uh, OK, so. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit about how this works. There's also some functionality, some extra functionality here where uh, I have English comments and I also, because this is Canada, uh, as some of you pointed out in the chat, um, members are also able to leave comments in both official languages. So you'll notice that everything in this interface is in, is in French and English at the moment. Uh, there's probably a more elegant way to display either French or English, depending on the language that the member chooses, but I've not uh, necessarily implemented that, implemented that yet. But I do have... Uh, sets of statements in both official languages. So for example, now that I've switched the language to French using this toggle up here, um, the, the same set of comments appear in the other language. And uh, I'm able to similarly add. So, you know, some of our members are, are more bilingual than others, but you know, some people will want to add comments in both languages, but usually it's an either or situation. Um, yeah, so I'll bring this back over here and we'll talk a little bit about how I set this up uh, to be able to add these, these CAN statements. So the first thing that I wanted to mention is just the the prep work of getting these uh, these can statements set up it was a little bit uh, manual, but once it's in place, it's fine. Um, so basically, what I have in the in the SharePoint list is I have because I have four sets of fields uh, in English and French. I have eight columns that have a default that have default uh, string of text. It's quite a long string of text, as you can see here, um, but it contains the full list of all the statements with um, with some uh, delimiters that I've highlighted here. And some different formatting to uh, to allow SharePoint to parse it out and provide the this can statement list in a readable format. Um, <clears throat> so essentially, what I've done here is uh, taken a list of statements and I've sort of concatenated them all together with different uh, delimiters. So this the vertical bar, the pipe delimiter here, is basically saying you know put this in an on the next line uh, or put it in a in a separate uh, div in the SharePoint list. Uh, there's some formatting here. So, for example, if the if the SharePoint uh, if the JSON notices an asterisk in the state in the statement, it will bold it and make it a header, and you know it'll set it up. I'll put it back here. It'll set it up so that it won't be uh, it won't have a pointer, and it won't actually add anything. If you click on the point on the title here, it won't actually add that that statement, even though theoretically it could if it was formatted differently. Um, so you can have headers, you can have different levels of heading as well. Uh, that's all controlled by um, basically a separate column that contains uh, the default text of this uh, this long string of uh, delimited text. And then uh, the next sort of, I guess, fancier step here is converting that, uh, you know, that delimited set of statements into, you know, a set of uh, divs and a set of buttons that you can click on and add things. So just briefly here, uh, this is what the custom card looks like. So there's um, there's basically a for each. The, so like I said, for the for the first criteria, the excellence of researcher, we call EOR. 
I have a column here containing that text I was just showing you on the previous slide with all a list of all the EMR, uh, the EOR statements. And uh, you can see that I've split that uh, in the for each by the vertical bar. So rather than using an array in the field, in the um, list itself, I'm creating an array based on this delimiter uh, in the statements field and then iterating on that. So for each, I'm going each of the statements, I'm going to create a div. There's a bunch of different sort of uh, styling and classes going on here. So it's basically either looking for like the little, um, uh, I don't know, what is it called? It's the it's a shift six, the little uh, hat char character. Uh, if you know, it'll make the font size a little bit bigger if there's an asterisk at the uh, at the front of the statement, all the so on and so on. And then finally, uh, for each button, there's a custom row action that will set the value of the EOR comments box. So the comments box itself, uh, where it takes the original comment and then it looks for all this sort of exceptions, all these little statements that it wouldn't add. Um, so for example, if the word break exists, then it'll do a line break. Um, you know, if there's a little carrot or a little asterisk, it won't include those. Otherwise, uh, it'll look for whether the comments box is empty and then either add the statement or it'll add a space. If there's already something there, a lot of space and then the statement just so that everything's spaced out properly. Uh, so this has turned out to be a really, really handy way to do this. So like I said, I've got eight different, uh, different columns there that contain that long string of text. Each one contains a separate set here, um, a separate uh, long statement that is broken up into lines like this. Uh, four for French and four for English. So uh, yeah, so that's been very, very handy. And uh, you know, our members have had a lot of success uh, rather than having to copy paste information into the form, uh, they've been able to uh, you know just click on the pre uh, the pre existing statements. And then, uh, like I mentioned, usually I would I, I have been using inline edit field here uh, to be able to actually edit things further on. But now, uh, given that I can't, this clicking on the field just opens the form here um, to be able to go in and make specific changes if members want to do that. So next thing here, uh, just briefly. So um, yeah, just this uh, neat tip that I that I sort of figured out. Um, basically, what you could do is you could have this button that will collapse or expand a given card. You could have that just be you know triggered by a yes or no. This is what I used to do, uh, sort of the more naive approach. But because we have a lot of members doing this, we didn't. I didn't want everybody to you know have to see the same card either be expanded or collapsed. I wanted it to be individually controlled. And so I switched from a yes, no column to control uh, sort of whether this is open or not. And this is all controlled by just a display uh, if statement in a, in a display in a style tag. But um, what I'm using instead now is a multi-person column. And basically, if your name exists in the multi-person column, then it will show expanded for you. And if it doesn't exist in the multi-person column, then it'll show up collapsed. So each person can individually control whether they are they can see the, the card collapsed or expanded. And so the code for that is actually quite simple, like actually shockingly simple. So for that button that we were just looking at, um, I've called the field expand for. So basically expanding the card for that particular person. Uh, so it looks for the name or the, I guess the email address of me. So the person that's running the list. And if it doesn't find it, when you click on it, it will add it. So it'll append to the list. And if it does find it, then it will remove it. So basically acting as a simple toggle, but one separate toggle for each individual person that's using it. And again, that's been very convenient. And um, when this gets sent from person to person, as it does throughout the competition, uh, this this all resets. So you're not necessarily constantly having to keep these keep closing these yourself as long as you open them but it does sort of allow you to keep things open if you want to keep looking at them and the last thing i'll quickly mention here for a couple minutes uh is uh sort of how i control sequential process updates so we haven't quite gotten on the microsoft approvals train yet uh there's a few different reasons for that that i don't really feel like getting into but um yeah so the way that we track you know we have a list of member peer review members that need to go and see this. So there's there's potentially three or four different members that have to see this one after the other, uh, sort of validating each other's work and making sure they didn't miss anything or anything like that. And so what I have is basically I used it, like I said, uh, in my initial slide here, I had uh, I was using a multi person list that was controlling who had seen it, and who needed to see it still and so on. Um, but given that I can't necessarily keep I can't necessarily trust the order that, that puts them in anymore. Um, I'm now using three separate just 
strings, just lists of, of names for our members. And um, I wanted to make this easy for people to be able to add members if they wanted to. So, you know, it's not a static list. You might want to add members. You might want to reset the list of members. And <clears throat> so what I've done in order to move uh, basically members' names move them from the list of people that are next to review to the active reviewer that's listed on the actual card itself to uh, people who've previously reviewed it. So, you know, the uh, future, present, and past. Um, I'm doing this one at a time by physically, or I guess digitally moving the names, the strings of their names from one field to the next to the next. And uh, I'm basically controlling all of that using a... Uh, using this button, which has a, a bunch of set value functions in it. And um, yeah, some some convenient uh, <clears throat> uh, formatting here to be able to add new members. So what I have here, like I said, this is the next list of next review is the future of this, of what's happening with this. The active reviewer is the present, and then the previously reviewed list is the past. And so what I'm going to do here first is just talk about how to add a member. So let's say right now the active reviewer is is me. This is a test account that I have. And then the next person to review is my other account, the current account I'm using. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here just for the for the for the demo, I'm going to add to say that my test account is going to want to see this again after I've added um, after I've added members. So I wanted to have a field here that would allow a drop down to basically not have People need to memorize the exact string to be able to add a person, but they can basically go start typing the name and ha have it auto fill with the person. And so one at a time, you can add the members, any members that you want to add. Um, you can just go and pick them and then click add member and it will move the member you're adding to the bottom of the string of people who are next to review. And you can do that as many times as you need to um, for the purposes of demo, I'll only do it once. And then once you have that set up, um, <clears throat> uh, I'll be using, I'll be able to use this button here, uh, to send to next. And this is actually in French. So I'll change the interface to English here <laughs> for the demo. Um, so it asks, it asks if you're sure, because just in the context of this interface, um, I had, uh, some automation, uh, because the cards are all the same size and the same length, people were accidentally hitting the wrong button when they were doing this. So I have now have a sent to next. So you're not accidentally hitting the, the item before the one you meant to hit or the one after if the one, if the, if items are moving around on you. Um, so basically once I hit the sent to next button here, you'll see that the, uh, the present will move into the past. The, uh, next person that's in the future list will move to the active reviewer and then uh, the, obviously the person that's remaining here will move to the top of the list for next to review. So once I click send to next here, um, you'll see that the list, uh, the item changes here. This is what I mentioned here by the, this item should be filtered out. And when I refresh the page, it will be filtered out. Um, but right now you can see this is switched to the buttons disappearing. It now says review complete. And uh, so if I go do and refresh this here, the, yeah, like I said, the item is now gone. Uh, I'm just going to quickly bring it back through this other view uh, just so we can see what's going on now that this, there's an automation that usually processes this and sends it back to me, but uh, rather than waiting for that, I'll just reset it here. So now you can, we can see the results of what has happened. So now the active reviewer is the, the second person that was on the list. Um, the previously reviewed is now the person that had been previously the active reviewer and this person has moved up and just very, very quickly here, I'll show the code of how that works. There's basically these three uh, fields. So the active reviewer text, the next member's text, and the previous members. So this is the same three fields we were just looking at. Basically what it does is it goes and uh, grabs the, the item before the first delimiter from uh, the next members and moves it into the active reviewer text. The active reviewer text, because there's only ever one person in there, just if there's anything there, it gets moved to the end of the previous member's text. And um, yeah, and it'll, it'll blank out the active reviewer. The active reviewer field here is a is an actual person column. Uh, the automation that runs behind the scenes also goes and grabs. Uh, it, it does a lookup in that we're using Office 365 uh, in Power Automate, and it goes and grabs the actual person field so that it can share with them, uh, share with the actual person, because like I said, not everyone has access to every card. Um, they, all, they all only see the list itself, and each person gets cards that are just the ones that they want. Yeah, so... Uh, those are the features that I want to talk about, and I think I'm uh, more than out of time, so I will uh, pass along to the next person.